After the honeymoon period has come and gone, a lot of times we run into intimacy challenges. We run into times where one or the other is not getting as much sex as they believe they need to have. There's distance between the relationship. Things start getting a little strained. We're going to be talking about that this week on episode number 222 of The Relaxed Male. This is The Relaxed Male, a show that comes to you each week helping men to remove the nice guy from their life so they can actually live their life on their terms. Join the host, certified coach, Brian Goodwin, as he helps men step out of their heads and become free from the thoughts that bind them. Hey, man. Hello, and welcome to The Relaxed Mill. I'm your host, Brian, and I am a certified men's coach who assists men who are just neck deep in the suffering of their life. Men who are going through tough times like divorces or job changes, things like that, to men who are just going through day-to-day struggles, struggling with relationships and struggling with who they are as a, as a man in today's society. Life can come at us fast. Sometimes we just become so overwhelmed that we don't know what to do. That's where I come in. I help men get to the root of their suffering, help men step back, relax, so that they can actually enjoy their life. In each episode, we take a look at the different challenges that men face and how you can actually look at your life in a different manner and change the thoughts that you have about that circumstance to be able to become stronger, more successful. And on the, on the other side, you can feel better about yourself without playing the victim. So guys, welcome. Hello again to episode number 222 of the relaxed mail. We're trucking right along and wanting to jump in this week as I'm kind of shifting. I don't know if you've noticed the past couple, three episodes, and it seems to happen about once a year, the focus of what we're talking about kind of shifts and we get a little more, a little more detailed. And we're talking a lot about relationships this year because that's where so many men often struggle is with the relationships. How do I get a better relationship with my wife? How do I get a better relationship with my girlfriend? Things like things along those lines. And so what happens is a lot of times we actually go in and we start having things like roommate syndrome cropping up. Just lack of communication, lack of connection, lack of just the things that you used to do when you were originally married. You know, when you first got married, you know, you had sex, you know, you were a couple of bunny rabbits. You may have gone at it, you know, once, twice a day. Yet nowadays it's maybe a month and once a month, maybe, you know. Might even stretch out to where it's once every six months. Maybe you only get, uh, you get some, uh, get some action on your birthday. You may, (laughs) you're, you're, these are things that are sadly occur. These are extreme examples, but they are, they're examples that do occur. And we often have an assortment of different intimacy challenges that crop up and we wonder, we try to figure out, we, I mean, that's one of the reasons why you have so many. You go to any gas station, any convenience store, and they right around the all the impulse buy areas, they've got things from horny goat weed to extends to all these other quick fixes that are supposed to help. They've got things that are supposed to be aphrodisiacs for women, and they're supposed to get women all riled up and ready to go. There was a a rouse, which is a gel that you're supposed to put on, on a woman, and it's supposed to really get her up and up and up and going real good. There's uh, there was all these different really quick fix pseudo pharmaceuticals out there that are supposed to help people have sex better, have a better intimacy, a better intimate uh, encounter. Except they don't work. Hence the reason why more and more of them come out every year. We are always running into different intimacy challenges. We come across problems time and time again. And there's reasons why these intimacy challenges come up. And the big one is just because we're human. And because we're human, we can't do anything in our life without having some type of emotional reaction to it. 
Now, a lot of times it'll be good. Actually, 50% of the time, it'll be a good reaction. The other 50% of the time, it's not a good reaction. It's not a good response. We have a bad thought. We have a ba- we have the pain. We feel the pain of a 50-50 lifestyle. And this is normal. This is 100% always going to happen because us humans, we are emotional beings. We are also creatures of habit. So we find a, we find a routine that kind of works for us and we want to stick to it. We don't want to deviate. We get up in the morning, we get, sit down, we have a brew up our coffee while we go to the bathroom, we do our poop, then we get up and we have a, we drink, drink a couple cups of coffee and then we get all our stuff packed, thrown into the vehicle and away we go and we're gone for the day and then buy, fight the boss and everything else that we do there, talk to Steve over in accounting and then we come back and we sit down and we, you know, may have supper already ready for us or we get supper ready if the wife is also working. And then we take care of the kids and all that. And the wife comes in, we take care of the kids and we sit down. And once all the homework and everything else is done, we sit down and watch television for a little while. And then it's about nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night. And it's like, all right, it's time to go to bed. And you go to bed, you say good night and turn off the lights and you go to sleep, only to wake up and do the same thing again. Or you may have it where one person goes and sits and watch, watches their shows on their television in one room and, You go and watch your television shows in another room, or you play video games in another room, or you do something away from the wife. Y'all are both in the same house, but separated. These all, these things happen. We fall into these routines and we have this roommate syndrome uh, cropping up. And roommate syndrome is a, is just one of those big challenges. It's not a bad thing. Roommate challenge can actually be a really, it can be viewed as a really good thing. We'll dive into that here, here short, uh, in a short bit. But the reason why we struggle and why we have the intimacy challenges that come up is because one, we have our, our thoughts and our thoughts about the circumstances. And we think, well, it's the other person's problem. They don't like sex. And so we don't, don't even need to try. And so we find ourselves into a routine. We start telling ourselves all these stories and all these lies and all these false uh, dichotomies that keep us in a buried in a hole and uh, with no satisfaction. And we don't want to don't want to deviate from our routine, because if we do, then we're going to start stirring up emotions and those emotions might not be very good because, I mean, again, it's a 50-50 uh, principle that we're going into effect here. So there's half the time it's going to be good, a good response, and the other half of the time not, may not be a very good response. What you deem that response to be is all completely up to you, but we don't want to stir up the emotions. We don't want to irritate the wife and cause her to get angry at us because then there's a good chance that she may not, if she may have been interested in having some sex and being intimate with us. And now we've pissed her off. So there's no hell, no hope there. So we don't, we, we avoid being emotionally connected because we don't want this. We don't want to piss the other one off. And because again, like I said, if we piss the other one off, then we're not going to definitely not going to have any, any whoopee at that night. And we always want to have whoopee, especially if you're a guy. And then you throw in guys, if you've got any touch of nice guy syndrome in you, in you, you're going to, you're even caught shooting yourself in the foot even more because you're doing stuff to try to manipulate your wife into having sex. And she sees what you're doing. She sees right through your, your, your covert contract. And because you aren't man enough to actually walk up to her before doing everything and going, Hey, you know, if I, what would it take if I, if I get all these uh, dishes washed and get the kids put to bed early and you, how about you and me fool around? She possibly could say no, but again, because you didn't even bother to ask her, you just did stuff, assuming that you were going to convince her that she was just going to automatically want to have sex with you. She's going to say no. So we instantly don't even try. Take all these and more little instances uh, uh, together, wrap them up, and we start getting the intimacy challenges that we face. Now, a lot of people, I do want to kind of point out that a lot of people want to say, well, relationship can't survive without sex. I disagree. 
and this is coming from a guy who loves to have sex. I'm a guy who who struggled deeply with the fact that my wife didn't like to have sex. We've been married for 28 years, and 15 of those years, if not more, was me playing the victim, me not trying even. Did we go without sex? There was times where we went six, seven months, eight months without sex. There was times that it would surprise me and wonder what in the world got into, into my wife because all of a sudden it'd be like a couple times a week and then it would dry up again. It would be gone for, you know, two months. Can you survive without sex? Yes, you can. Can a relationship survive without sex? Yes, it can. But it all pivots around what you think sex means. For us guys, a lot of times that is how we how we are interpreting our wife's love. Are we doing a good enough job for our wife? The answer is no. And so we try a little harder and we still get a no. And then we try a little harder and get no. And then we finally go, well, screw it. Who cares? My wife doesn't. So why try? And so we settle. We stop trying. We stop trying to build a relationship. We start going down the victim road, start looking at porn, thinking, yeah, well, at least I'm seeing somebody have sex because I know God knows I know I'm not having any. And we start feeling sorry for ourselves. Yeah, we're just packing on the hurt, the frustration, the pain that we feel. Because one, we're not allowing ourselves to actually process any of the emotions that we have about whether or not our wife is actually wanting to have sex with us or not. We're actually just holding on to baggage that doesn't serve us. And yes, you can have sex. You can have a relationship. You can have a great relationship without sex. There are couples who, for whatever reason, the guy actually has real problems with, with his equipment. His equipment just refuses to rise, whether it's psychological or what, or it just, it doesn't work. Can you have a, a relationship there? Yeah. And there's people who do. There's people who are married to the person of the opposite sex who is, in all pretense of purposes, asexual. They do not find sex sexy. They just see it as just something people do from time to time. They may see it as something that is, you know, oh, I don't know. Uh, I just said, you know, and then I don't know. I answered the question. It's funny. <laughs> I got to start working on that, uh, <laughs> that crutch word anyhow. Sees it as just a way to keep a guy. But the key to all of that is to roommate syndrome and whether or not your relationship, even if your relationship can survive without sex or not, all these pivot around one major point. And it's what you're telling yourself. You have a choice. You can either accept your relationship as it is. You can accept your relationship is never going to have sex again. And you can just act accordingly. Whether that serves you or not is up for debate. Or you could choose to find a way to get it to work. You can find a way where you are lacking because you can't control your wife. So there is a circumstance of no, of no sex happening in life. There's no intimacy or very little physical intimacy. And there's five different types of intimacy. Just we'll, we'll jump into that real quick because there, I can't, as I was doing a little research for here, I came across all points North. Cause I was just kind of curious, you know, what are some of the, what are the different types of intimacy? I knew there's physical intimacy and emotional intimacy. But what else? And they stated that the All Points North website actually pointed out that there's five. There's emotional, spiritual, intellectual, social, and physical. And I found that really interesting because emotional intimacy, we all know. That's what the women are. The women in society, the feminists in society are all stomping around going, you need to give us more emotional intimacy, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, there is a point. You don't want to just be emotionally cold to your wife. I mean, that's that's point. But at the same time, us men do not express our emotions the same way women do. 
when we start expressing our emotions like women do, that's where we start losing our wife's respect because they really don't want to hear a man talk about how horrible his day was and that, you know, he cried in the bathroom for, for 10 minutes because, you know, the boss said something horrible. But they do the, I believe the emotional intimacy actually happens as you incur the intellectual and the social and the spiritual intimacy. When you get those three intimacies together and you start working on the spiritual intimacy, which is a lot of people just say, oh, I'm just spiritual. No, your religion, what do you believe? Is that compatible with your spouse? It's not necessarily I'm a I'm a Church of Christ and she's a she's a Baptist. Can we get to, get along? Yeah, because the fundamentally we you do have the same same beliefs. Just one believes you can't dance while the other one believes you can't have music. And so <laughs> yeah, they're they're just they have their own little tiny they're all they're all Christianity. They all believe the same thing. It's just the details that man has decided to interpret is is what's wrong. And no, if you've got two Church of Christ followers, they may just be just fine. But then you may have a Baptist and a Lutheran, and the Lutheran's like going, hell yeah, man, it's time to drink up. We just said amen for the last time of the day, and we're going to go out to lunch. Let's have a beer. And you break your rack open a beer, and you go out to, and you go to town. That's, you know, Baptist may not go, may be going, yeah, well, let's, you don't drink quite that early. At least wait until 5 o'clock, you know. <laughs> So when you have the spiritual intimacy, when you agree with your spouse and y'all both are on the same spiritual journey, whether you want to call it a religion or not, I think spirituality is a religion or is religion based. All right. A lot of people want to have the comfort of religion without having religion and try to say, oh, well, I'm just being spiritual. No, dude, you're you're trying to have your cake and eat it, too. All right. Be religious or not, you find you have more comfort, you have more happiness, you have more fulfillment when you have a religion in your life. Hence the reason why so many people follow religions, all right? Well, you can't be Catholic because, no, no, you're picking out what one to a very, very, very small amount of of preachers, pastors, uh, Priests, that's, I knew there was a P word in there that was about that Catholics do use. Priests that did utilize their position incorrectly. But that's, again, man is fallible. Do you forgive them? Well, that's up to you if you want to forgive them or not. You don't have to forgive them, but you can forgive them. And I know I'm getting off track on this, but again, it's all spiritualized. It, it's a, it's t- of the religion. So you have your spiritual intimacy. Can y'all be spiritual together? Then there's intellectual. How curious are you about your wife? How curious is she about you? How curious can y'all actually have curiosity based discussions about y'all's different topics that y'all love without getting your nose out of joint without getting irritated, without getting upset because someone asked something that was quote unquote, so offensive. If you can do that, you are going to build intellectual intimacy. You're curious about what they believe, what they have to say, what the, you know, you get, you are interested and you have intellectual discussions with your, with your partner, with your spouse, then the social intimacy, how much do you share in each other's interest? Do you have a hobby? Do you, does she have a hobby? Do y'all share the instances about what the hobbies are about? And there's not much that you may share at times, but then there's a lot of, that you may share at others. But you get the spiritual, intellectual, and social together, and the emotional intimacy will actually take care of itself. Guys, when you start hanging around your uh, the men in your in your life, you start having a band of brothers, the social intimacy for your wife will actually grow because you're emotionally stable. You're emotionally taken care of. 
she's not having to do the emotional intimacy work on you. It just happens naturally. And so when you get the spiritual, the intellectual, and the social intimacies taken care of, the emotional gets taken care of. And when you have the emotional intimacy, then you start having the physical intimacy coming into play. Now, when I say physical intimacy, I, I'm, I'm talking sex, all right? I'm talking about the boom, chicka, wow, wow stuff. But at the same time, physical intimacy isn't just sex. That is the connection, the physical connection you have with your wife. How often do you go by and just touch your arm? Do you, when y'all are going to Walmart or going to the store and y'all are walking to the mall or whatever, do you offer her, her your arm? Does she take your arm when y'all are walking? Do you hold hands while y'all are walking? That's physical intimacy too. So look at, see where are y'all being actually physical as in touch, not just boom, chicka, wow, wow, brown chicken, brown cow type of stuff, but you allow the, you're also having just different types of PDA not just snogging, not just laying a big old wet kiss on her, but you know, hugs, arms around the shoulders, arms around the waist, holding hands, having her take your arm as you walk her across the uh, the parking lot. When you do all five, when you get all five of those taken care of, the women actually will become more sexually attracted to you because women want to feel emotionally safe and secure. They're not going, they, they don't want to know that you're not going to bark them because they did something. Because it takes so much for a woman to open up and accept a man. All right. They have to be able to feel trusted. They have to know that they can trust their partner. Women are mental beings. And so, this guys, this is one reason why you struggle, especially you guys out on the dating scene. This is why you struggle so much when you whoop your, your dangling out. And show, take a picture of it to show the women how proud you are of your penis. All right. Congratulations. Yes. We are all, we all are in love with our own, uh, our own dicks. All right. We, that's just the only way to say it. Yes. I definitely dig it. All right. It brings me immense pleasure. But if you're honest with yourself, it's just really a freaking ugly organ. It's this tube of, of, of blood and, and, tissue with a weird little helmet on top and then on the bottom has got this wrinkly up bit of skin that's got a couple of a couple of organs that hang inside of there and it goes up and down and 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 stuff and then whenever it gets really excited it throws up on you and it makes a big old mess i mean it's really kind of if you get honest with yourself sorry guys your your package is a bit on the ugly side but yet we want to throw <laughs> throw it at the woman and go, hey, look, I've got uh, I've got a weenie. You want it? And ninety percent of the time, our spouses are just going to look at it and laugh at us. She may find it funny if we sit there and we helicopter a bit. But if you, depending on how far along in the marriage you are, you know, twenty years, you're you walk in doing the helicopter, she's going to yeah. roll her eyes and say, get some underwear on, get dressed. No one wants to see that. And she may even be able to do it with a smile on her face and with a, ch- uh, with a giggle in her voice. But at the same time, she's not fully interested in seeing all that you have downstairs. Even when you are married, you have to activate her mentally. You have to turn her on mentally. Yeah, guys, it's easy for us. We hear. Yeah, you want to get busy here in an hour? We're all ready. We're ready to go. Our women are not. And to get our wives to start being intimate again, there's several things we've got to do. For Because when it comes to roommate syndrome, that is the big thing we all have to really worry about. Because roommate syndrome is we've hit a plateau. We've hit an emotional plateau. We don't. We found our, our rut. We found the, the groove that we run the smoothest at. And that running smoothly, running that comfortably, it isn't always the best thing. Our wives want us to have adventure. They want to go along with us on an adventure. 
And so when you are at a roommate syndrome, and I wrote a, a, a I believe it was a blog post about it, but it could have been a podcast episode about why roommate syndrome actually is a, a good thing to have. Because what roommate syndrome is, is just you, your life's coming to you saying, congratulations, man, you've made it as far as you can at this level to go further and to continue to have an amazing life. You've got to grow. You've got to change. Setting, being comfortable causes you to be uncomfortable. You have to get out of your comfort area. Your joy cup has filled up. You cannot have any more joy until you get uncomfortable. To grow, to become better, you have to pay the price in discomfort. So are you willing to grow? Are you willing to stay with a relationship and find out how you grow? There's a lot of different ways you can do this. And there's things from just the simple stuff. Go back to the basics. Start dating your girlfriend again. All right. And when I say girlfriend, that's your wife before she was your wife. Date her like she was your girlfriend. Tell her, Hey, I'm going to pick you up at, uh, at six o'clock on Friday, Friday evening. Uh, get yourself dressed up. We're going to go out and have a good time. You could tell her what you're doing. Or you can tell her, not tell her, you can take her out to a movie. How when was the last time you went out to go actually see a movie instead of sitting at home? There's something magical about that sticky theater floor. But start dating her again. Start having that exploratory relationship once more. Ignite that intellectual intimacy. You do that, you will find that y'all actually have some great conversations going on all because you started dating your girl again. Another thing you can actually do, and this is if she's up for it and you can find it, find ways to work this out, schedule sex. And I know I get it guys. It's like, yeah, but when I do, when we, we actually do stuff like that, then it's just, it, it really feels fake. She's just kind of laying there like a wet dish rag and there's no, not really any fun in it. And I, I get it. If her heart's not in it, she can really, she kills the mood really fast. You thought sex could be unfulfilling. Wait until you have sex with somebody who just really doesn't care to have sex with with sex at the time. But at the same time, you help her to start going back into the sensuality of her body. It can actually help. There's people who have gone off and done the exercise of 365 days of sex. And they find, and the women often find, holy smokes, I'm a beautiful woman. Because a lot of the women also, you know, not just that we have to, they have to find us attractive mentally and all that. Women have to find themselves attractive too. So they've got the, and that's one reason why they fall into the trap of comparison so much. Because they don't believe they're beautiful. Somehow they shagged, the uh, snagged, shagged. Well, you've been shagging each other, but snagged this pretty all right good dude and that's the same thing as guys think i mean hell there's a lot of times i sit around and go how the hell did my wife snag why did she want to go off and snag an ugly ass troll like me and there's people there's times i want to think that but at the same time because i found i was doing stuff that excited her and and and, uh, turned her on and with those 365 days of sex, you get to do that again. And then I, if you're, if you're entering around 45, 50 years old, like I am, you're thinking, holy crap, is, is, is Mr. Mr. Happy actually going to, is he, <laughs> are we going to wear him out? <laughs> you start thinking that. Cause I mean, at, at 20, 25, 20 to 25, you want to do 365 days a year. My gosh, I would be up for it. I'd be, I'd be Mr. Boner just the whole dang time. But the women, when they go through this, they find they come through with a stronger connection with their significant other. The men start realizing, holy smokes, you don't have to be a porn star. You don't have all the, all the lies that we've told ourselves that limit us in our sex. And we do, we tell ourselves a lot of crap about our sex that go away and we become better 
because of it. Now, if your wife isn't up for that, that's fine. There's other things. Maybe she's more okay with blowjobs. Well, then you do that. If not, maybe just a hand job is all, is all she's actually willing to give once a week. Are you okay with that? Maybe you do like what me and my wife do. It, it, we, we do, it's a series of trade. I give her a good back rub. And depending on how long the back rub goes, depends on how, you know, what we get. A lot of times, 30 minutes is what it is, what, how long the back rub lasts. So that, that week, get the handy. If I stretch it out to, to an hour, all right, we get a blowy. If I, if I can take it out to two hours, all right, well, then we got a little whoopee, which only lasts 10 minutes. So, <laughs> so, so you, but you can schedule sex. It's not a horrific thing. Our brain, the very fact that you think, oh my gosh, I won't, you will lose the spontaneity. That is your brain going, wait, 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 wait. I don't know if I like that idea. What if I do get to have the, all the sex that I want? Because there's a lot of times, men, the reason that we do the stupid stuff that we do that causes our wife to get mad at us so we don't have sex is because we don't want to actually have the sex. Nice guys, famous for not wanting to, to complaining that they don't get enough sex. But then when the opportunity arises, they find ways to sabotage that sex. Another way that you can increase your intimacy with your wife is to have a strong man's community pillar. That pillar alone is one of the great ones because you are showing up with a lot more masculine energy. You're showing up with a more well-balanced, emotionally balanced approach to life, all because you have a group of men who you talk to on a regular basis. You share your thoughts and your experiences with the men around you, and they share their thoughts and their expenses, experiences with you, which increases your masculinity levels and allows you to go out and expound, give your, your wife that sexual masculine energy, not even just sexual energy, just the masculine energy. Kira Brady uh, Counseling actually even recommends that you go outside of your marriage have a life outside your marriage to go out and live life. You don't have to have your wife in tow 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You're taking cleave, uh, cleave to your wife way too literally. Are you supposed to, to leave your mother and clean, uh, cleave to your wife? Yes. But that doesn't, it, that doesn't mean you stay by your wife's side all the whole time. You don't use your wife as emotional crutches, you use your wife as a woman who you get to talk to and you get to know and you have deep discussions with. Something else you want to do is go back and start doing the cheesy romantic stuff, all right? Buying her flowers, you know, leaving love notes, sending love texts, buying g little gifts, buying being silly. Have fun in your relationship again. These are all important things that you need, you need to do to keep your relationship fresh, to keep the intimacy going. Date your girl. Do the cheesy romantic stuff. Take your on surprise little concerts and things like that. Now, something else a lot of us guys do, and if you're not paying attention, you don't realize exactly what it is you're really doing, but drop the mental fights. We've had those things where our wife did something. Maybe she she told rebuffed us in in an advance that we were wanting to have some some nookie, and our wife said no. And so later on the following day, we have a discuss we have a fight. We relive that whole scenario, except then we start adding our own little two cents in there, and we really give it to her. We tell her what for. We send leave her in a blob of tears and now emotions and blah, blah, blah. we just let her have it all just in one for everything we've been wanting to say we say to her and we don't hold back both barrels in the mush bam you know we do though the only problem is is that when you do things like that you start to show up to your wife in a very disrespectful manner if you don't show up to her with respect. 
you're going to show up as being disrespectful. She's going to pick up on those clues. And then you're not going to be emotionally safe, emotionally trustworthy. So be, when you catch yourself having those mental arguments, stop. And actually, well, don't stop cold turkey or uh, all the way. Stop just beating beating her down. Let in her, in your mind, in that mental thought. This sounds weird, but try it, man. It's you. You'll see a change around maybe two, three, four weeks down the road. But stop winning and let just let her win in your thoughts. Just let her have that discussion, that winning. So she's you're you're blah blah blah. You come up with her own the own story as to why she can't, and you accept it. All right, and just let it go, because one, it's not a fight; it's just a mental fight. It has no bearing other than on you. So if you're letting her have it and you're just telling her what for, then she has you know you're going to show up as not caring. Yet if you stop having the mental fights with her and you just go ahead and just let her win every time she want every time you want to have a mental fight with her, okay, it's better. It becomes better. You start showing up better. You start showing up caring. You start respecting her more. Another way that you can actually increase the intimacy, and this happens more with when you are actually with, uh, when you're actually dating your girl again, is you're being curious. You actually start becoming curious about her and start asking her about her day. And when she says something, allow, you know, well, why is it, why that? And you start asking the questions and letting her talk. You can just ask questions. She'll love the love to tell you all about her day. She'll love to share it. All you have to do is keep asking the questions and she'll talk all night long and think you're the greatest man in the world because you let her talk. Don't try to fix nothing. Just ask questions. Let her decide where she wants to go. And the following last thing about how to get her to grow, her uh get the emotional challenges to to fade away and this goes with the texts and the and the love notes but actually show gratitude be grateful for what she does get rid of the scarcity mindset of no sex and just be grateful for the fact that you have your have a spouse someone who is willing to at least give you a hand job Someone who's at least willing to look at you in the eyes. Someone who's at least willing to hug you. Someone who is at least willing to say, I love you. Someone who's at least willing to cook you supper from time to time. Are you willing to be grateful for all the things she does for you? Are you willing to be grateful for all the things she has done for you? If so, awesome. Keep telling yourself what those are. But then also tell her why you are grateful for what she's doing. Tell her how much that, you know, uh, that tater tot casserole. How grateful are you that she made that tater tot casserole? Tell her, let her know. Why is she, why are you grateful that she put away your socks? Why are you grateful that she swept the living room? Why are you grateful for whatever? Why are you grateful that she's still sleeping in the bed beside you? Start telling her. You don't have to bombard her with all of them, but, you know, once a day, go by, say, hey, sweetheart, sugar buns, sugar booger. You know, I'm grateful for the fact that you give me a kiss. Good morning. Every morning. And then just give her a kiss. Go. Show gratitude. Let her know how much you appreciate her, whether it's. Small, insignificant things. It doesn't matter whether she's doing it back to you or not. That's not the important part. The important part is that you're showing her gratitude. The 100, give 100, expect zero principle. What if you gay, t- I'll share a link to, a link with it in the, uh, in the show notes, but it is, what if you gave 100% and expected zero in return? This is a crucial part of having an intimate marriage, give a hundred percent. Don't expect anything in return. 
It's because if she does give you something in return, she does return the favor. That's added bonus, man. You weren't even expecting that. It's added bonus. That's that's icing on top of the cake. Well, if you sit around being the nice guy, expecting something in return, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get resentful. You're going to get mad because she's not completing her half of the covert contract that you never even told her that you had. Just do it. Don't expect her to return the favor. That's a five-year-old. Well, I'm not going to do it until she does it back. Well, no, dude. This is a marriage. This isn't sibling rivalry. This is you and your wife going back to back against y'all in the world. And if you're sitting there too busy, well, she just doesn't have anything to do with me sexually. Isn't That's not going to do anything to better the situation at all. You want to better the situation so that she might accidentally be curious in playing with your dingling. All right. She may actually want to touch your pee pee, but you've got to give her a reason as to why. Can you do that? You can. You can do all that. Because what's the alternative? If you let the roommate syndrome come over, you let the lack of intimacy come along, the lack of intimacy all up and down the board, all five of those fall apart. The marriage is going to fall apart. And then you're going to be one of those divorced men. Guys, Yeah, we may not be making the big money that we used to, but we still have the ability to hold on to a good relationship. The wife can show up and we can show, we can provide what she needs to provide. But if we don't, the marriage will fall apart. If we don't grow, the worst that the best that it'll happen out of a roommate syndrome sets in and we do not grow, we have a very, unsatisfactory marriage. But what typically is happens is one person or both people have affairs. They go off on their own adventures. And is that the solution you really want to have? Well, at least I'm happy for a little bit. Are you really though? Because now you have to deal with a divorce and you have to deal with your kids not being with you at all the time. You don't have any of that. Sounds like it would be better to go ahead and put a little bit of work into your marriage. Run it a little bit. Get out there. Get uncomfortable. Because what's the res- what's going to happen if it falls apart? Well, you've now got better skills for dating the next woman. So, guys, with that, I want to say thank you all very much for listening. If you heard anything that just lets you that spoke to you, share it out to uh, you. If you know a man, a fellow man who is having problems, who's struggling, share this out to him. If you're you think that it would serve your community, share it out on the Facebook and Twitter and, and all the other places. Take a screenshot, share it on Instagram. We uh, let the guys out there know, let these other men know that we, there is a site out there that is out to make sure that men have better lives and we can have better lives when we actually have good relationships. Our relationships become stronger and and better as we do the work, as we we do these the struggle of having a better relationship with our spouse, having a better relationship with our kids and our boss. We can do that, and all you have to do is you have to hit share. If this is the first time listening, you liked what you heard, man. Thank you. I would recommend you on your on your uh, podcast app of choice. Hit that follow, hit that subscribe, hit that like button, whatever it is they 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 have for you, so that you can get this podcast every Thursday. So, guys, with that, if you are interested in maybe you're struggling with your with a relationship and you're you're trying to you're trying to get everything back together and you're just you're not sure where you're stuck at you're you just feel like everything you're doing is just spinning out of control and you're losing ground fast. What do you do? Well, I would recommend you go to relaxmail.com forward slash coaching offer. Right now, I have got, st- I still have openings for coaching clients for $300. This is a $6,000 package. I'm giving it to you 95% off. Why am I doing that? Because I just want to be able to coach and I want to get, try to, I want to give guys as much value as I can. 
but I'm realizing that it helps to have some skin in the game. You have a little skin in the game, you're willing to try just that little bit harder. So, men, if you're willing, wanting, and you think you're a lot, if you're, your marriage is worth it, $300 investment it might save you a couple, a couple thousand in divorce costs. I think it might be actually be worth it. I don't know. I could be wrong. You may think that, uh, that the uh, divorce isn't going to be that much and it ain't, ain't going to cost that much. It ain't going to be that bad. And it may not. I don't know. But if you would like to try to keep your wife, like to try to keep your, your family together and you want to see if you can get the best relationship known to man out going, then reach out relaxedmail.com forward slash coaching offer. All one word, no spaces whatsoever. Fill out the form. I'll give you a link and we will get it all taken care of. So guys, with that, I want to say thank you very much for listening. You take care and we will see you next week. Till then, 